Oh, yes, hello, dears. This is the Ninth Dimensional Pleiadian Collective, and we are very happy and very honored to have an opportunity to connect with you. Some uh, for the very first time, and others of you, uh, it's a pleasure to do it again. So we're going to cover a lot of ground. We're very excited to be here. We're very excited to be able to share information with you, but also to learn from you. You are teaching all of us a great deal about duality and integration. So this is not a one-way street. We are not just giving you information, but we are also learning from you. And that's a vital piece of the puzzle here for you to know that you are teachers yourselves. Oftentimes you had the perspective that you were down here on this planet, you're struggling, you're disconnected. What could you possibly have to share with beings in a higher dimension? Well, quite a, quite a bit. So uh, we thank you for incarnating, for taking on such challenging roles and for teaching the rest of us in this universal game of integration. So we're going to try to keep it relatively linear today, but we tend to go off on a lot of tangents and we do this with intent because it forces you to process information through your heart center. You can't stay in your head when we're not staying linear. And it gets you thinking in multi-dimensional ways. And that's the whole point of, of, of the game here, that you are raising your vibration and you're changing uh, your perspective by utilizing the filter of the heart center, which is the multi-dimensional filter, as opposed to the head center, which is the filter for the third dimension. And there are remarkable things about being down in this dimension where you are. It provides you with a linear perspective of reality, which is unlike any other uh, it's unlike any other dimension because when you go up in frequency, when you're in the fourth dimension and up, it is a multi-dimensional perspective of reality. Uh, there is an awareness that you are connected to source energy, that you are always part of a collective, and that you are always creating and manifesting with others. All right. When you're down in the third dimension, you have the luxury of experiencing reality from one soul perspective and that is what gives you the illusion of time here that you have the notion that there is a past a present and a future and you're not seeing what is coming up over the hill so to speak that it's always a surprise for you it's always an adventure because in other dimensions we're able to stand in the center if you will and look down other probable timelines and decide which one seems the most exciting and then step forward it's a bit like uh, fast forwarding through a movie all right, we can get a sense of it and how it can play out, uh, but we don't necessarily have the experience of it. And uh, when you actually decide to step into a reality or to choose a timeline, you actually walk down it and have that visceral response to it. So we can look and experience multiples, decide which one we want to want to explore and then step into it. You, you think you're only exploring one. All right, you're, you're only present with that one. You're not doing any previewing down here. And that's what's about to change. This is also what you're about to shift. This is a game of integration. This is a game of descension and reascension. So each dimensional, each dimension, or if you want to call it density, is a game. It has specific rules and regulations, if you will, that you are exploring, that you are donning for the duration of the game. It's a bit like playing basketball or playing soccer. Each game has its own unique rules, and you agree to abide by those while you're having the game, while you're playing the game. And higher isn't necessarily better, all right? Higher dimensions are just different. We have different rules and regulations to our game. So while you're down here in the third dimension, it doesn't mean that you're at the bottom of the totem pole. You are still divine source energy. You are still at the very top. All right? You cannot be anything less than source. So whether you are incarnating into the ninth dimension or the fifth dimension or the third, it doesn't mean that because you're in a lower dimension that you are less than anyone else in a higher dimension. It just means that you're playing a different game with a different perspective and a different set of rules. Do you all understand that? Mm -hmm. 
You're also quiet. Yeah. All right. So that's a big one because a lot of times you want to give away your power. You want to give away your divinity, quite frankly. That you look to beings in other realms, whether it's the ascended masters, whether it's us, whether it's uh, another channeled being. You want to give your power away and say, oh, well, they must have a better perspective. Well, no, we just have a different one. You have access to the very same information that we have access to. You have access to the raw data, if you will, which is what we consider information at the source level. All right, all experience is recorded and then deposited, if you will, in libraries. And when you go up to sources level, it's just pure raw data. You have the ability within your being to access all 12 dimensions of consciousness at any time. All right, you don't have to just access things from the third dimensional level. When you find solutions to problems or you get uh, information from your higher self, you're not processing that at the third dimensional level. You are increasing your consciousness. You're raising your vibration and getting the information and then bringing it back down to the third dimension and processing it here. When you go up to source, it's raw data. And each dimension under that has its own set of filters which color the information as the raw data is pulled into that dimension based on the rules and the regulations of the game. So as you go here, it's really important that you take the bits and pieces that resonate with you. Because not only is that information being pulled through the dimensional filter, if we're giving you the information, it's pulled through our own filters. Then as Wendy channels the information, it's pulled through her filters. And then as you interpret the information, it's pulled through your own. So that's a lot of filters for information to go through. So you've got to take what resonates and also know that we have an agenda. Every single being that you interact with has an agenda. Now, the agenda may be to support you, all right, to give you the highest uh, information for your own good, but it's still an agenda nonetheless. So it's vital as you go through this process of ascension that you know that you are your own best source of information. Now, um, there's a lot of ground to cover and we want to make sure we, we kind of give you some broad strokes because if you don't understand the name of the game, part of what we're giving you towards 2012 isn't going to make a lot of sense. Earth is the grand experiment. It is the planet of emotion. Nowhere else in this universe does a planet have as wide a range of emotional expression as Earth has. Earth has genetic material from thousands upon thousands of worlds on it. And along with that genetic material comes all of the emotional experience of those beings, all the way back to their inception. It is all encoded and carried within the bloodline. The reason that's important is because all of their experiences lend to the emotional database to pull from. All right, Other planets are not structured this way. They may not have as much emotion going on because their experience isn't quite as extreme. All right, so they're just focused on working on maybe a dozen issues on that planet, and they're trying to integrate those dozen, dozen issues. Sometimes it works out, sometimes not so well. If you look at the Syrian star system and the Orion star system, those are very vast systems with very uh, diverse life forms on, on the planets there. And there's been a lot of difficulty in integration, in working out the problems, in not judging one species over another species, not judging one culture as being better than another culture. And there have been a lot of wars in that system. So as the grand experiment, all of these different systems set representatives to Earth to play out the dramas so that they couldn't quite integrate in their sector on a smaller scale. So to give you an example of this, if you had someone who, uh, let's say, was your enemy, all right, from another country or another planet, and you destroyed each other. Uh, you may set that up down here on Earth as your next door neighbor, and you have a dispute over the fence line, 
All right, so you work it out on a smaller scale. So as you learn how to work it out here, you then write in your energetic field how it's done. How, did I, how do I integrate that? How did I do it? The how-to book on integration of borders, all right, boundaries. You two just worked it out. So what you do, because all of the records are stored within your own energetic field, your own energetic field contains all of the experiences of all of your lifetimes, of all of your genetic line, and even stored within there is another layer which has access to all experience, period. You can think of those as the archives. They're not accessed very often, all right? But the others, you're constantly pulling off the shelf and accessing and, and playing around with. But when you learn how to go through that process of integration, when you drop all of your judgment around a situation, you send that information off to all those other aspects of yourself which are operating in all different kinds of dimensions, in all different kinds of systems, and that being can then take that information and they can either open the book, all right, or you can think of it, another way to think of it is, is like antiviral software program. They can either run the program and wipe it out, or they can just save the file. All right, so they can take the book and put it on the shelf or they can open up and read it and they have choice because they've got free will to do so. And they can say, ah, all right, so that other aspect of me figured out how to do it and now I'm down here so, uh, you know, rather than blowing up the country next to me, uh, we can choose another option and here's how it's done. So this is what goes on. And this is why there are so many people who are observing the game who are watching what's going on. That's why you've got so many ETs who are communicating with you all, so many angelic beings, because this isn't just the end of a, universe, of a, a galactic cycle for Earth. This will change the universal game. It is impossible, because you are holographic in nature, that as you all undergo this transformation and you're sending this information out to the rest of the universe, that it cannot change the universe. When you get up into the higher dimensions, duality still exists because this is a universe based on duality, but the extremes are not as extreme the higher you go in dimensions. So where we're at here in the ninth dimension, you have, um, you know, the difference in our extremes would be light gray and medium light gray. All right, down here you've got black, white, and 50 million shades in between. And the difference is when we have a disagreement, we don't blow each other up. All right, we sit down, we have a conversation, and then as a collective, we decide what we want to pursue. All right, that doesn't mean that we still don't see ourselves as unique and have a unique comp comprehension, a unique understanding of events because of the coloring that we bring with us through our filters of other lifetimes. But we also agree, because we know that we are part of a collective, that the group wants to have a particular kind of experiment, uh, experience, or to experiment and have a particular kind of experience. So the next several years are going to be very interesting. We're excited to see how you all play it out, because frankly, we can't tell. We're not certain which version you're going to choose. You're moving through a sector of space which is very uh, dense with very high vibrational frequencies. If you want to call it the photonic band, that's what it is. Photons are light. It's information. And as you're moving through the sector of space, you're being bathed in all of this love, information, joy. It prepares you for integration so that you can move on to the next level of the game or to move on to a brand new game as the case may be here. So when you're being bathed in this high frequency energy, it means manifestation is much, much faster because the vibration is increasing. Uh, as you increase your vibration, time seems to, from your perception, to accelerate until you cross the boundary of the dimensions in which you see time ceases to exist altogether. So right now everything feels like it's speeding up. If you look back last year, you felt like you had maybe 16 hours in a day rather than 24. And uh, you know this year it feels more like you've got about 12 in a 24-hour day. 
guess what? It's going to be even faster next year. So this year we're talking about 2010 as being the year of manifestation. That you are really getting to practice what it is that you are manifesting. You are 100% of the time creating your own version of reality. And you are 100% in control of what that reality looks like. The issue for you now is that most of what you are projecting or vibrating out is all happening at the subconscious level. So you are shifting your awareness to that of a conscious creation as opposed to a subconscious going along with the flow kind of creation. Now for those of you, uh, we see there are several different levels here. For so, some, some of you are going to feel like this is old information. Don't worry, you make Lima new factor too. And for others of you, it may be the very first time. But understand that absolutely everything that is created in your physical world first happens at the energetic level. Whether it is an illness within your body, or whether it is uh, an argument or a connection that you make with another being. That first happens at the energetic level of your being. And it is driven by your emotional field right now. All right, so there is a level or layer within your energetic field of your emotional body, and that is the fuel, if you will, that drives and accelerates manifestation. All right, you can say thought creates form and emotional states vibrated into being. You can have a thought, but what you feel about that thought is actually what you're creating. The, the, the thought is just to give the mind something to do. All right, the emotion is, is pulsing from the multidimensional filter of the heart. All right, so we want to make sure you get this concept here that the mind is the filter for the third dimensional experience. It allows you to see things linearly. The reality is that there are multiple versions of reality going on simultaneously. If you want to think of it as a harp, this is string theory, but if you want to think of it as a harp, we call it the harp of probability. Each string has a particular vibration or note to it. All right. But from where you're at, you think that you're only on one string. Really, as you shift your vibration, you are moving back and forth between strings constantly. You experience this as deja vu. All right, when you switch, when you flip to a different version of reality, it feels like you've been here before. Yes, because you were another version. <laughs> you had that experience on another string and you've just recreated it as you shifted. There are wonderful things about being in a linear reality. It doesn't mean that it is any less, and we want to make sure we get that across to you, that it's very special to be here. It's very unique to be here. So enjoy being here now instead of worrying about going through the ascension process. All right, it's going to happen soon enough. You know what a multidimensional perspective feels like because that's what it's like in every other dimension, in all other aspects of you who are having those higher experiences. What they don't know, and what's more unique, is this third dimensional one. So appreciate it while you're here. So the heart is the multi-dimensional filter. The way you experience your connection to source through the mind is your sense of creativity. All right, That's why when you start to open up and you start to bring in information, you sometimes think of it as your imagination. <laughs> because it feels like it's all going on in the same place and in some ways it is. But the more refined you get, the more sensitive you get, the more that you are able to discern the vibrations. All right, What you can feel as being processed through the third dimension and what you feel is coming through, whether it's your higher self, whether it's your guides, uh, whether it's celestial friends, each one has a unique signature to it, and you get better at tuning in to the subtleties. All right? So with this process of manifestation, again, it's your emotional states that are so important. And the process of integration is quite simple. But you all want to make it very, very complex. How you integrate is to see how or why you have created something. 
Because when you see how or why or how it has been of service to you, you let go of all judgment. Because in order to hold that perspective, you've got to take yourself up, that increase your level of consciousness to a higher awareness. And once you do that, you can see the true nature of the game. And you see that it's all an illusion anyway. So this year, because you are moving through this band, things are coming faster and faster and faster, you get to take a look and see what is resonating with you. Do I like what I'm creating? Do I like the relationships that I'm having? And if the answer is no, or if you're getting triggered in fear, say, all right, why did I create this? Take responsibility. How is this serving me? Maybe it's showing you, for instance, if you are belittling yourself, all right, that you're not giving yourself enough credit for all the wonderful things that you do. That inner critic just keeps driving you and telling you it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. And someone stands in front of you one day and just says, you know what? You are wrong about everything. They are doing you a great service. They are the mirror for you, reflecting back what you are pulsing out energetically. So when you encounter this, take responsibility for it and look to see why you were creating it and how this interaction was of service. All right, so I need to start acknowledging all the wonderful things that I'm doing. And when you see that, you, you're letting go. That's the first step. Now, a lot of you will beat yourselves up because you'll say, oh, well, I know all this stuff. I know how to manifest. I know how it all works. And then when something is created or generated that doesn't feel very good, you beat yourselves up. All right, and you're saying, well, I should know better. What thoughts did I have that created this? <laughs> what you are missing is the fact that often as you go through this process and you're increasing your vibration and you're holding higher and higher vibrations, any fears that you have, they can't be housed in the same vehicle. All right, so they begin to vibrate, they begin to intensify, and you manifest it. You pulse it out there, and so it gets manifested so you can recognize it, so you can integrate it. It's not that you were holding those negative thoughts on a conscious basis and pulsing that out. It's that they started to vibrate because you were holding the, the higher vibration. All right, are you all with us on that? Yes. And, and that was a way for you to clear. And that's the whole point. You want to let go of all of these fears that you have, all these lower thoughts that, that are going on. And just decide whether you like it or not. Do you like what you're creating? If you don't, make a new choice. One of the most uh, challenging things for you all that will shut your energy down the fastest is indecision. Just make a choice because that keeps energy flowing. And you can always make a course correction. All right? You are constantly in motion. You are constantly changing. That is the only constant in the universe is change. But when you firmly plant your, your feet in the ground and say, I don't know which way to go. It shuts all of your energy down. It gets harder for you to tune in to figure out what it is that you want. But if you make a choice, you're going to know right away whether you like it or you say, mm, not for me. And then you can make a new choice. And this is the year that you really get to practice this, that you really get to make vibrational selections. It is just as easy for you to choose a new habit or a new vibrational selection as it is to choose an old one. It's no more difficult. If you really want to change your life drastically, it is no harder than creating the same old pattern. In fact, it takes more energy to create and go against the natural flow, which is to, to move towards connection. It takes more energy for you to feel disconnected. So if you stop struggling and just kind of go along with the flow, you're naturally going to move towards raising your vibration. How's that for support? <laughs> so 2010 is the year of manifestation. 2011 is the year of activation. All right, and 2012 is the year of transformation. So with 2011, as you start to increase your vibration, you are activating more and more of your genetic material. The coatings that have been turned off, um, without going into too much detail for you, you are hybrids, all right? There are five seed races that create your human vehicle. Um, you have the genetic material and all the issues that go along with it. 
And a lot of your coding has been manipulated. And remember, this hasn't just been done to you. You all agreed. Some of you were the ones doing the manipulating in the first place. All right, you're not all victims. And some of the coding has been turned in on and off. So now you are reactivating some of this coding with your uh, original blueprint, all right, which was 12 strands of DNA. Now, you're not going to recreate all of the genetic material in the physical level. You're only going to recreate three. Some of you won't even bother to do that. You're going to bypass that and go straight on to creating it for the new energetic version of you, which is a light body. As you're shifting dimensions, and we should say this, that this has never happened before where a planet has shifted dimensions along with conscious beings. All right, you've had one or the other, but never the two together. And certainly not a planet that was an experiment such as this, where you have so many extremes of emotions, where you have so much genetic material. So as you are making this transition, the fourth dimension will be one that you're probably not going to stay in for too long. It's more of a transitory zone that allows you to kind of shift into a new game, kind of get the feel for the game and the multidimensional perspective, and then you're going to move on to the fifth. Uh, we can't really give you a time frame as far as years go. You know, you all like to have very concrete notions of time, but here's the deal. You don't experience time. So the amount of time, if you will, or the duration that you're going to spend there is going to be based on your own desires. If we have to give you, to quiet the mind, a number, probably 50, 60 years. So as you are making this transition, you are altering the structure that you're taking with you. As you increase your vibration, your body's got to change. Your body is a reflection of your energetic field. The energetic template creates the vehicle. Anytime you've got anything going on in the body, any sort of illness, it is always, without exception, created at the energetic level. Be that a genetic deformity, be that uh, some disease that you've taken on or a virus or a parasite that you have allowed to inhabit your body. All that starts first on the energetic level and is a vibrational attraction. You can clear the body. You can alter the body in a breath. It does not require time, right? But most of you have a challenging time with that because you think that everything requires time. It's hard for you to think of being able to clear your body in a breath. You think, well, it's probably going to take me a week. This is a big issue, so maybe two. And uh, so that's what you set out for yourself. So you tell your whole body, all right, it's going to take us two weeks. You've given all the cells their marching orders, as it were, and they say, all right, we've we got to do this at a two-week pace. It doesn't have to happen that way. And as you continue to increase your vibration and increase your perspective, you will also change your perspective of time and allow yourself to clear things out instantaneously. All right, it just becomes easier. And also, as more and more of you do it, you write the how-to book uh, for everybody else and you put it into the template for Earth. So that as one person over here miraculously cured themselves of cancer in an hour, you can go to the library and pull out that book and see how it's done so that you can apply it to whatever issue is going on within you. And it just gets easier and easier and easier. As you intend that to be the case, as you intend to clear your body or whether you intend to connect your guides or whatever it is that you want to do, the more of you who do it and put the information into the record, the easier it is for everybody else. And this is why we tell you that it does not take a majority to change the world. It takes a few of you because you write how it's done and it becomes available to absolutely everyone else. Do you all understand the notion of holography? Anyone know? All right. Holography. So if you imagine in a, a giant mirror and there is an image in the mirror and you shatter the mirror and it, and it shatters into a hundred pieces. Each of those hundred pieces contains within it the image of the whole. All right, so the image that was on the big mirror is now represented in all the little pieces. If you make a change to any one of those little pieces, the change is reflected in all 99 pieces. All other 99. All right, this is 
the holographic nature of the universe. So if you change it at one place, it gets reflected everywhere. And this is why and how you all can create huge change without having to go and change the world outside of you. That by making changes within yourself, you can affect the whole. Because as you make it within yourself, everybody else gets the how-to book on how it was done. You all have access to those records. And this is really key because it changes how you operate. It changes how you work. You don't work in the old way, which things that you have to go out, you have to work, and it's all external. It's all hard. It's all challenging. No. That's the hard way. That's the third dimensional way where you are thinking that you're separate. You're working as a collective. Uh, whether you want to understand it or buy into it or not, you are already part of a collective. You just have put up an illusion that says you're disconnected. But the truth of the matter is that you are already connected to absolutely everyone and everything. You're connected to the chair you're sitting on, the carpet on the floor, the plants and trees outside. Those are all part of you because they are part of divine source energy and you are divine source energy. So, as you increase your vibration, you turn on and off the coatings. All right? Right now you're operating in with the emotional body. As you are increasing your frequency, you are also activating a new level, a new layer, a new template for your new physical vehicle because you're not going to create a dense third dimensional version anymore. You're going to create a lighter version of yourself. It's not as dense, but it is still a, a physical vehicle. It is far more malleable, but it requires a different template. And you're just now starting to activate that. We would say for most of you within the last year, year and a half, you started to activate that energetic field for yourself. If you want to think of your meridian system, uh, for those of you who work with some of the Eastern ways of healing, uh, this new crystalline matrix follows a very similar patterning to the meridian system in the body and you are starting to activate it so for those of you who are healers and work with those systems uh, don't be surprised if you feel like you are activating two systems at once or you're doing two adjustments at once because you are you are helping to realign the new system it is going to create the new physical vehicle. What will happen as you continue to increase your vibration is that this new system will begin to take over the load for the old one. And when that happens, you literally transform your body. You are no longer going to be the dense physical form that you once were. It's going to be much, much easier for you to heal. It's going to be much, much easier for you to change your appearance. Yes, we already see some of the wheels turning. You can have a facelift by just thinking about it. You can project yourself however you want. All right. But here's the challenge, and we're not sure how it's going to play out because, as we said, this hasn't been done before, and you're taking a lot of these belief systems with you from the third dimension and you in raising your vibration enough to take you into the fourth dimensional realm. Now, there's still clearing and activation that's going to continue to happen at the fourth dimensional level. And some of those old belief systems may get re-triggered here and there. So it'll be very interesting for us to observe how you work with that, how you define who you are, how you are projecting your image. Because you are so used to defining yourself as your physical body, not as a soul inhabiting a body. So there is a shift in the perspective that will happen as you transit into the fourth dimension. But there may be a few programs there that are still going to keep you aligned with, all right, well, I look like I was, you know, 45 years old, so I'm still going to project myself as a 45-year-old. You could do it as a 12-year-old if you wanted. But most of you are going to stay pretty aligned with where you are and, and what you're already looking like and how you're feeling. Um, that's a lot of this is going to happen next year so this year when we're when we're working with with many of you as we do our group sessions and as we uh do our lectures we're talking really about manifestation that's our main focus so that everyone can let go of a lot of the issues and really get in the driver's seat instead of everything being on an autopilot and next year we're going to talk more and more about this activation now with the dna you all want to know how much you've activated. 
you know, have I activated three strands, eight strands, 12 strands? Here's our answer, and most of you aren't going to like it. It doesn't matter. How do you feel you're doing? That is more important. Because if you are beating yourself up, then you're going to have a harder time of it. If you say, all right, well, I'm doing pretty well, then everything's going to go pretty well. If we were to tell you, all right, well, you're 50% done, half of you are going to say, oh, only 50%. You know, and, and you'll have a very negative experience about it. Others, others of you would be very excited and say, ah, oh, 50%, how wonderful. Well, I don't have to work as hard now. So it's all about how you feel about it. Don't worry where you're at in the game. When this transition comes, a lot of your major shifts in perspective of reality are going to come at the very end, if you want to call it the quantum leap. Because you're talking about two different operating systems. Talking about the third dimensional mind filter and the multi-dimensional heart centered filter. And you can't run all the programs on both systems at the same time. You can run a few in both systems or move back and forth between them. And that's what some of you are doing right now, your bridges. You move back and forth between the fourth and the third dimensions. Some of you even go up to the fifth. But until you get that other system fully up and operational, you're not going to understand some of these concepts because you have no point of reference. Because you get locked in the mind and it's very hard for the mind to, to let go of. If we were to say to you that right now you understand duality, but there are other universes that are tripolar, what would that experience feel like? <laughs> it gets you all locked up in your head and you're, it's like your brain's in knots because you have no point of reference. And that's what a lot of these other experiences are like for you. Uh, so until you make the quantum leap to the new operating system, you, you're going to have a sense, but as a physical experience, as a real visceral experience, a tangible one that you can hold on to with absolute positive certainty on a day-to-day -day basis, it won't happen till the end. And here's the other part of it, that, you know, you're going to make sure you've done everything that you wanted to do in third dimensional reality before you make the shift. Because once you dissolve the illusion, you see how the magic's done, it ruins the trick forever. So, you know, it, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Once somebody's shown you the illusion, that's it, it's blown. So you want to make sure that you've done everything that you came here to do. And you all are going to get to where you want to go. Some of you will take the express route. Some of you will take the scenic route. And there are many beautiful things to be seen along the way. Uh, so each one has its benefits. And it's really important for those of you who are surrounded by people who are still sleeping. And you know what we mean. You've got family members who think that you uh, are a bit off. <laughs> that, uh, you know, that they don't understand what you're talking about. That it's really important that you don't judge them, all right? That you don't say, oh, I just wish they'd wake up. Understand that where they are is perfect for them, for the experience that their soul's wishing to have. Now, as you continue on your journey, know that you may end up helping them in the long run because here you are, you've, you've been up for a while, you've been awake for a while, as we like to say, and you know, you've had your coffee, you're reading the newspaper, you're having a nice relaxing morning and they're getting yanked out of bed to be, uh, to be uh, startled and awakened. And they're going to be a bit disoriented. They're not going to know exactly what's going on. And there you are to tell them exactly what's going on, tell them exactly what to do, you know, get yourself cleaned up, put your clothes on and we're going to go and here's where we're going because you're already prepared. So even though it may be someone who only has you know, three strands of DNA activated. That's all right. It's all right. Because they're going to get there at their own pace. And again, this is about you not judging. This is about letting go of all judgment. Not judging someone as being light, as being dark, as being asleep, of being awake. And just knowing that where everyone is, no matter what choices they're making, they're appropriate vibrational choices for them. And it doesn't matter for you. All right, you're creating your own version of reality. And you can hold your own resonance and pull in through vibrational attraction people who will support you. People who will understand what it is you're talking about. You've got a room full of them right now. <coughs> They're going to be able to assist you to make you feel that you are connected, to give you that sense of family and connectedness. 
and that's you know and if others are still sleeping that is all right there are some who knew full well that they were not interested in going into the higher realms but they wanted to be here for the game and so they will still be asleep not everybody has to go nor do they want to go for the right and then there are some who are sitting on the fence trying to decide what they want to do and then there are those of you who have already awakened and are certain what they want to do and they're in the room with us right now so 2011 is activation and 2012 is transformation and we've already talked a little bit about that as far as transforming a physical vehicle you're starting to activate your new vibrational body which is the new level of your energetic field and you literally are transforming your body you're transforming your vehicle now 2012 is a window it's not an it's not a cutoff date it is in a sense that you all gave yourselves and agreed upon a date because otherwise you wouldn't keep yourselves motivated if you knew it was a window you would all put it off so now you've given yourself a date and you say well we got to get it together it's coming because that's how you view time uh, it's not it's not that you are going to experience a big cataclysmic event necessarily you may observe it if you are looking down into the lower dimensions and seeing what they're creating but as far as timelines go the different vibrational ranges are starting to pull apart and create separate timelines for themselves there are still some pieces that are overlapping that the fourth dimensional version is experiencing some of what the third dimensional experience is, is having right now and those will continue to pull apart and so until they become different timelines mother earth has, has done everything that she really desired to do in the third dimension and she will eventually remove her energy from the third dimensional field but how will that be experienced by those who are still vibrating in the third dimension uh, it depends on how they want to set the next game up for themselves how they want to set up the next experience they may create a cataclysmic event for themselves or they may just find it dissipating that their their reality is fate all right as they remove their energy now you're not going to continue to go through the death cycle uh, you will go through the ascension process all right you will take your conscious awareness <coughs> into another version of reality and when you're done playing this game you simply remove your focus it's like walking out of a room all right it's it's very easy it's very effortless you understand that you're an immortal being projecting itself having a unique experience and you decide you're done and then you take your toys and you go elsewhere that's really what it's like so we've kind of given a broad overview but we really want to make sure that we we spend a good deal of time here answering questions for you that we make sure that that we're able to assist you as best that we can so where would you all like to start can you um, go over what this figure is this, that Wendy has on her phone? the seed of life it is the basic geometric pattern uh, in which all life uh, comes from. Uh, when you talk with sacred geometry, it is each of the geometrical patterns has its own properties, its own mathematical principles and uh, vibrations to it. When you look at the seed of life, it is the basis, the vibrational basis for this planet. That's the best way we can explain what it is without going into too much. Um, but then your tree of life is built on top of that. It starts with the circle, which is the connection of all life. It is the basis of all things. It is the beginning and the end. I have a question. Yes? It's a personal question. What is it on my hand? Well, um, well, we'll answer your question, but we want to keep it to a very universal nature today. Um, it's anger. It's anger, and it's almost like uh, if you think of yourself as shaking the fist at the world. So it's, it's anger that you're carrying there about feeling that you're not getting what you want and that your needs aren't being taken care of. All right? So you've got to look, and this is, this is an example for you all to see how to work with the physical vehicle so if you're not certain what it is ask yourself ask your subconscious what thought creates it what belief system do I have that's creating this in my physical vehicle what program am I vibrating that is showing up in my physical body 
and allow your subconscious to tell you. Now, when you first do this exercise, the answer you're going to get is, I don't know, because you've got a block, you've got resistance to it. So about half a dozen times through, you're going to get something that pops into your head. It may not make logical sense because we are talking about your emotions. And those emotions may be heightened by experiences that you've had in other lifetimes for which you have no conscious awareness. Irregardless of what's gone on in other lifetimes, you have recreated the vibration in the frequency in the now. The now is the only place from which you can create change. Because this is where your focus is. Past lives, that's another timeline. That's another version of you and your focus, that version of you is taking care of it. But your focus is all here on this timeline. So what have you got to work with? This life and this vibration that you're pulsing right now. Uh, if there's one thing we can recommend for you for this next year is to be fully present. To, to be in the now. All right, to try to be engaged with whatever activity you're doing, not thinking about what's coming, not thinking about what just happened. Because what that does, if you think about it from the hopper probability image we gave earlier, if you think of it like a, a spotlight of energy on a single string, that's you focusing all of your power, all of your energy in the now. When you start thinking about the past or the future, it's like that light diffuses and goes off onto other strings. All right, so it's wasted energy. All right, you're not harnessing your full power. Now, for those of you who are a bit more advanced, let us say this. They aren't really strings that you're projecting yourself on. They're all dots, and they are just different versions of the now. The future and the past are all going on concurrently. Everybody take a nice deep breath. We already see the wheels turning. <laughs> We're planting some seeds. So some of you, it's going to be a hard concept to grasp. Others of you, it's going to be a light bulb goes on. So these strings, if you were to zoom in on them, it wouldn't seem like a solid line. It would seem like a series of dots. All right? Each now is an experience based on an agreed upon set of circumstances that, that structure your past. All right? The past didn't really happen on this now, but you all said it did. This is the one that you agreed on at a personal level and then at a collective level because sometimes what will happen is that you may only need a small bit of what the collective has agreed on. The rest of it doesn't really matter to you. It's not going to play out in your version of reality. So they can have all these other things that are going on at the collective level and you're just taking a small bit of that. Now, every time you have an experience, you are constantly moving to another point, another now. Time is an illusion. Time is, if you want to think of it like the Dewey Decimal System, all right, in your libraries, it tells you where to find a record, where to find an event, and that is all that time is. We do not experience time in the same way that you do. We can move through time very easily. Uh, you know, if, if you're sitting here working with us right now and you two days from now say I'd like to connect to the Pleiadian Collective for us it's just the next moment it's not two days later all right we are, we are able to shift our awareness anywhere we wish and we can tune into you and we can tune into your perception of time and where you're gauging time and find the appropriate vibration does that all make sense yes. so the past and the future it's all going on right now. So try to stay present in this version that you are experiencing uh, and not to fuse your energy to these other parts of you that you're just not there. There's another part of you that is having that experience, but this linear third dimensional perspective of you is having the one in this room at this moment, in this way. All right. What is this complex grid system that I see? Uh, around the planet, you've got all kinds of templates and grids uh, that can be tapped into. It is a, a universal network, if you will, if you want to think of it as the internet for the planet, that you can tap into and find information. Now, there are all kinds of grids for, for just about everything that you agree on as a collective. Every healing modality on this planet has its own unique grid. It has its own unique signature that healers are tapping into. Um, 
Some of them tap into other planetary systems. Some of them tap into source energy. They go all different places. So it looks like a, a web or a grid. And it's just information that you're able to tap into. Now, uh, until you raise your vibration enough, you're not able to access some of these grids. It's, like, it's almost like there's a dampening field, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, around the information because remember you've got to increase your vibration in order to see into the higher dimensions we can see down but remember you can't see up unless you increase your vibration so the grids if you've increased your vibration enough and you're tapping into one of the grids it provides you with it's like an encyclopedia of information for everything in that grid that you can tap into there's also a song that I'm hearing recently it's an omic sound, and it doesn't come from this uh, dimension. No. Uh, each dimension has its own vibration. The planet has our own vibration. And you can listen and hear. As you become more and more sensitive, you're all going to start to hear the, the sound, the vibration of different spheres. All right, whether you're talking about the sphere of Earth, whether you're talking about other dimensions, other planetary systems, they all have their own unique signature. Now, many of you get ringing in the ears, and that's because you're resisting the energy and not allowing it to flow through you. All right? So when you're getting that ringing and it's not stopping, try to get yourself aligned. Envision energy running all the way down through the crown of your head, down through your feet, all the way from the core of the earth up through your feet, back out to the galactic center to get yourself into vibrational alignment. That's one thing you can do. The other thing you can do is to get yourself heart-centered. So we'll give you an exercise right now. It's the easiest thing that we can ever give you to do. Can you give it 20 seconds? Yes. So while they're turning the tape, just get yourself comfortable. 